Hey guys and welcome. Today I am going to be building a multiplayer random level generator blueprint. I've done these before but I think um, I've got a new way to do it and this is going to be a lot cleaner than old tutorials. So it's going to be a fixed size grid of different levels. I've got a couple of levels up in my levels tab and I'm just going to show you how to set them up in multiplayer so that they're network replicated and you can run around with your friends. Um, so we'll create it in a blueprint and by the way everything that I do today, this blueprint that I'm about to make, um, this will be available for download at the link in the description as well. So if you want to have that and dig through what I've built today um, and use it in your own game or whatever, then you can get that there. So I'm just going to call this BP underscore um, multiplayer random level generator. <clears throat> so straight up, I like to put a billboard in just so I can see where this is um what's a cool one very important <laughs> no i don't like the middle one sure that'll do i'm just going to put that up um just 100 so i can see it above the root so straight away in the persistent level i'm just going to drop that right in the middle so that everything generates around zero 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 just for now Um, <laughs> moving on, um, so when we begin play, the first thing that we need to do, well, okay, so we're going to, we're going to have an has authority. We want this to generate on every single client of the game, but we can't generate it randomly on every client because they'll all use different seeds if we use a random seed. Um, so what we want to do is we want to get the seed from the server instance of the game and then generate a map from that seed on every client. So what we might do is if on begin play, uh, this might need to be replicated to start with, I think. Um, so we'll set replicates to true, just there. And then if this has authority, then what we're going to do is we're going to set the seed, which will just be an integer. So we will set the seed, which I'm actually going to rename to r underscore seed because I like to put the r before if they're using a rep notifier which is what we're going to use so we're going to set the seed to a random random integer within range between zero and like I don't know 100,000 or a million or something um, you could probably go bigger than that I don't know I don't know what the max is for integers um, and then what's going to happen is in here when this is replicated then that's going to generate the level. Um, yeah, so what we might do is we might have a custom event in here, which will be um, client generate new random level from seed or something. Um, and this is going to be firing on each version of the game. Um, so I wonder if I can just call this from here. I'm oh, sorry. Um, client underscore. Yeah. So whenever the seeds updated, then we're going to generate the new level. Okay. So now, um, we can get this from the game mode later, which I might do as well. But for now, let's just do it like this. So this is just like classic random gen shit, which I've done like a thousand times at this point. But, um, what we might do for loop for loop um should i do this in a function i'm just i'm just wondering um i might do this in a function so let's cut that and we'll just create a function and just call this generate new random levels <clears throat> okay So the first index will be, um, I don't know, it could just be zero, or it could just be one, or eh, zero, zero will do. And then we'll just call this num x. I don't really know how I'm gonna do this, by the way, like I'm just sort of making this up, num y. Um, so these are like sizes, and then we'll have a local variable in here, which we'll just call x. 
in a local variable, which we'll just call y. And then we will say um, get streaming level. Um, sorry, that doesn't want to be a variable. We want to say um, get streaming level from a random array item from stream, actually. Random array item from stream. And this will be level names, which we might put into a data table in just a moment. But for now, let's leave it like that. And now this is where we've got um, stream or random stream. Now we need to set this random stream whenever we set the seed. So whenever the seed is updated um, in here, before we generate that new level, then I think we need to set ran oh. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. That's fine. I saw random up there and I'm like, oh, is this just, you can only randomize the seed, but no, there's a new seed thing right there. So this is occurring on the client. Oops, that can stay there. Um, and the new seed is going to be R underscore seed like that. And then we're going to regenerate the map. So this event is like sort of redundant actually. So we could probably just get rid of that event, get rid of that there, and then just put that function that we made in there instead. Okay, so now this is inside the function. So now, um, create level uh, streaming level instance. Create instance, that's the one that we want. So we're creating an instance of the streaming level, which comes from this array whatever the name is that we've got, which we might actually populate now. Let's give that some names. Um, so I had some levels up in my thing up here. <laughs> hey, bro. Um, LC1 through to LC4. So LC1, tab. Oops. Oh my God, bro. Try to tab to be quick and it's just like making life even harder. LC1, LC2, LC3, and LC4. So those are our random levels. And then we need to create a unique instance name for each one. Um, so that'll be the X. So we can just get X. Let's rename these down here to loop X. Oh, in capitals, lit loop Y. Just so that I can say get loop X and get loop Y. Um, and then put X into there and then a little X like that. Can I get rid of my caps lock? Oh my God, dude, what is happening right now? <laughs> okay. Um, and now my computer is sort of freaking out. <laughs> Australian background didgeridoo music lit. Um, it doesn't show up on the video, but sometimes in the editor, my drop downs stop working. So I need to restart the editor periodically. <laughs> um, Where's my map that I just created? This one. <laughs> With your boy. All right. Now, where is my blueprint? So this is just giving them each a unique instance name. And then what we might do is we might add that new instance to an array, uh, which is going to be called um, streaming levels. Oh, that's not an array. Whoops. What did I just do? Add array which is going to be called streaming levels, which is going to be called streaming levels after we create a new variable. <laughs> God, my brain's not there today. This is funny. Streaming levels. Okay. Um, now we need to... We need to set load. Set should be loaded to true. And set should be visible to true and also then we want to set the transform or we should probably set the transform first before we load it so that it doesn't load in the center and then do some weird shit although I don't think it matters because this should all happen in the same tick I don't know I don't know dude don't listen to anything I say I just talk fucking nonsense I just talk nonsense Okay, now we're gonna make an array, make a transform rather, 
um, and the location of this we're going to split the rotation we're going to split and the rotation's easy it's just going to be um, what int times no float times float I think or in no int times float sorry we want an int times float and we want to get a random int in range from stream between 0 and 3 0 and 3 multiplied by 90 maybe I should do a hexagonal one one day instead of a square grid that could be kinda cool and also a bit of a headache <laughs> um, okay so that's the they'll be rotated randomly now we wanna put their positions in which is pretty easy we just grab loop x loop y and we will multiply them by a float um, which will be what t level size or tile size I like the word tile which we'll just put up there and make that a public variable now I need to measure my tiles in just a moment so let me just copy this and then we might want to add these to something in just a minute maybe what we could do is we could say add vector um, oh my god I'm clicking all over the place like a psycho person add the X add the Y and then what we might do is we might say get actor location self so that this is offset from wherever the root of this actor is this that there that's the root the notorious root <laughs> um, okay so okay we actually did quite a lot just there now when this is completed um, can I I might have to fire another event so this will be check uh, but, 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 um, check if all levels are, or maybe I'll just call it level gen complete and then we'll call that from here or actually it doesn't even need to happen from there maybe it could happen from uh, on rep seed and uh, no, we'll probably put it here level gen complete Mm, actually no this is this is unnecessary as well probably so I might just delete that and I might just put it here level gen complete which is an event which is here and so then what we need to do what I was gonna say is to check all of these to see if they're all visible but I just realized that there might be a better way to do this. Um, inside of here, if, 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 if we're on the very, if we're on the last X and the last Y of the loop, so if, If these are equal, so if this is equal to this and this is equal to this and boolean, then this is the last level that's being created, the last instance that's being created. And so then what we could do is um, grab this and say bind event to level on shown so this is when it actually finally becomes visible because it takes a moment for them to become visible so what we might do can I just create an event in here okay cool okay oh level gen complete boom just like that okay um, so to just run through that this is create level grid this is spawn actual instances so spawn level 
instances. And then this is bind finish event to visibility of last level. So when the last level is made visible, this will fire. I don't actually know if this will work, but um, when that's done, then I guess we could like hide a loading screen or like whatever. But should we just check if this works? I wonder if this actually works. Um, so at the moment, these are my levels. So we've got that, 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 and that. <laughs> oh, you can't, can't see it. Oh, okay. So I just accidentally pressed play and it looks like only one type of level has spawned, which is interesting. And they all spawned in the same spot. Um, I wonder why that was. So I did make one mistake, which was that this tile size actually needs to be set. So I need to measure my tiles um, <laughs> with that dude. So if I go Alt J to view it from the top, um, oh my God, I can't get it from there. Uh, 2,500. 2,500. Oh, we didn't get any other levels because there was no number set for these. <laughs> Lol. Um, so let's go three by three, I suppose. So maybe it did work. Let's see. Okay. <laughs> he looks like he's having a... Looks like he's struggling a little bit, bro. What are you trying to do, man? What are you trying to do? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry you have to exist like this. It's okay. You'll be released soon. Now, these are all just shadows and things, I think. Um, everything looks okay to me. It looks like there's some sort of seams down there or something. I don't know. That just could be with the textures that I'm using. And is that like a weird overlap? Yeah, something's overlapping. Oh, well. Um, okay, so it seems to work. So does it work in multiplayer? That's the question. So if I go two players, or maybe even three players, and we get them all in new windows. Uh, okay, well, we've got two windows. This one's the server. Um, are they the same level? I mean, they look like the same level to me. Like, that is a wall definitely there on both instances of the game. And then around the corner, we've got something that looks like that. And let me see if I can just pull up that third window. Yeah, I mean, they look the same, right? And then we got... <laughs> we got our anonymous pig man over there. <laughs> yeah, rad. And they're playing the animations at different times because I didn't replicate the animations, but that does not matter. Um, okay, so that's multiplayer random generation in a nutshell. Um, now, there is more that you can do to this, which I might do in a separate video or... Yeah, I don't know. But I might upload this just how it is. But um, in the next one, what we might do is read this seed from a game mode. So if we play this again, um, we'll actually get a different map this time. So as you can see, Pigman's over there this time. <laughs> um, and it's the same map on each of the clients. But if we wanted a specific seed from maybe a game mode, um, we want to have the functionality to set that. And then maybe we want to spawn characters in after an amount of time or add specific levels so you don't have all random ones, but you can get, um, you know, ones that you've hand placed in or whatever. And we might also read this information from a data table so you can store your information in there. I don't know. Um, check out my marketplace stuff. There's links in the description to my Gumroad as well. I've got some good blueprints that'll help you a lot as a game developer, random gen stuff. I have a new Metroid Prime project in there, um, Minecraft style stuff, multiplayer tutorials, random generation tutorials, all of it in the description. Um, it helps the channel out a lot. And like and comment and all of that because I can't get views without it. So <laughs> thank you and I hope that was helpful. Bye.